Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton. The scent of cubicle dust on a stifling summer afternoon. And it is time for episode 25 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer, where we are finally going to have the anticlimactic revelation that the place this secret tunnel lets out is, in fact, the worker buildings. The citizen housing, which um, is not very surprising if you think about it. We should have been able to guess, and perhaps you yourselves at home have guessed that, yes, behind this door is a big tunnel that leads to the place all of these people work. It's worth remembering that right nearby is also the uh, the deep factory, although that lets out that lets out roughly equidistant between the deep factory and the uh, agri fields, and also the uh, reality folding drive, which is where the citizens have to work. Nightmare computer. Nightmare computer unlocked. So we're not actually going to go in here for the time being because as far as I know there's nothing new for us to learn. The secret lab uh, we fully investigated and we don't really have any further information yet. And of course Henry Division's safe is locked up until he will eventually, I hope, give us access to it. Which means the next interesting place is at the top of this uh, concrete casket but um, easiest way to get up there actually is probably to go up that lift. Before we do that I want to go visit the beach where there is also some kind of computer to fiddle with. Anyway, I have been intending for pretty much the entire length of this of this playthrough so far to at some point talk about Vaporwave and um, its kind of thematic underpinnings as a musical genre because one of the peculiar things about this game is that supposedly it's a love letter to Vaporwave. However, it features very little Vaporwave in it most of the music is uh, either synthwave or future funk, which are related and somewhat similar, but um, definitely distinct genres. But I'm not going to talk about the details of these musics today. I want to talk about kind of how they fit the tone of the game itself. Because one of the weird things is that the broad strokes of this game, you know, the um, back of the box description of its themes and narrative, definitely fit the uh, underlying themes of Vaporwave as a musical movement. This is a game about the disempowerment of the people in this horrible, difficult society. This is a game which is an explicit critique of consumerism and capitalism. Well, less so the consumerism, but definitely the capitalism. And Vaporwave as a musical, as a musical genre is very deeply involved in those ideas. You know, Vaporwave is about emptiness and waiting for your life to start, only to realise it never will. But it's also about a hope for an escape, an escape into dreams and drifting. If uh, Synthwave is about the sort of memory of how bright and hopeful everything seemed in the 1980s, even in its darkness, then Vaporwave very much is about the kind of like dry, dusty, cubicle work lives, the smell of mall food, the, well, the taste of more food, the smell of dust, you know, the glow of halogen bulbs, the kind of, like, deep existential ennui suffered by people who have, who have grown up in that environment and are dealing with it. Anyway, the fundamental flaw in that is that that's not actually what this game is about in any way, shape or form. Almost all of the broad strokes ideas match the ideas of Vaporwave. However, all of the details, all of what you're actually doing is completely irrelevant and is merely soaking in the vibe. Um, you could say that there is some cleverness to the idea of superficiality in using uh, a musical genre, which itself is a kind of like a knowing pastiche of superficiality, but I don't really agree with that. So. Um, I'll continue to talk about this a bit later, but let's have a rummage around in what these things are. I want to know what this mystery button does. That's what she said. Nightmare computer. Nightmare computer unlocked. This nightmare computer controls the obelisks on the beach. There's an activation command. Activating obelisk star map. Done. 
The answer to the second holy seal is revealed. Go to space, use the answer, see the cosmos, fear the cosmos, lust after the cosmos, embrace the cosmos, scream at the cosmos, put a gun to your head and cry at the cosmos. I would have expected K-Hax to massage that text a bit before he released version 1.0. These obelisks hold the secret to getting through the second holy seal. Normally this requires a data key. k crafted the obelisks in the data encryption. A man of many talents. Inserting the data key handshakes with the computer and allows the user to activate the obelisks. Good job, Starlight could break into it. The logs show that this was accessed recently by someone else. Yuri, what was he doing here? He connected a key and activated the obelisks. There's something else here as well. A remote key? An unknown device wirelessly connected to the machine and the key was input remotely two days ago. From where, though? It would need to be somewhere within line of sight to this device. Whoever remotely accessed it would need to be able to see the obelisks. Somewhere near here will have line of sight. Maybe up on the cliff behind me? The obelisks should tell me something, at least. Interesting. I say again. So, yeah, this is yet more, uh... This is yet, this is yet more evidence that Yuri is involved, although... Hey, isn't that... This is where K-Hax died, isn't it? On the other side of that cliff? But it says it needs line of sight, but isn't this a... Isn't this a security camera? I kind of thought that was going to be involved with this. What does this do? Oh, it's Magic the Gathering. It looks like this is showing me a code. The symbols are... Scholar, bird, snake, and bull. I'd better remember that code. It must be useful somewhere. I'm gonna assume that that was put into my case files somewhere. Oh, oh, they're going. Mm, that'll teach me to be looking at my computer when I should be paying more attention. Anyway, time to see if we can climb up these cliffs, I guess. So Vaporwave is very much a music for people who don't matter, about people who don't matter. Uh, it's the music of the bored teenagers in the mall who have now grown up and have the worst, most boring jobs imaginable. Vaporwave is the music of crushed dreams and empty hopes. Vaporwave is the music of sitting around waiting to die. But... For a game about the music of the disempowered, it's remarkably uh, focused on the people who have power in this society. This is not a disempowerment simulator. This is very much a game about the people who have power and use power and their own petty machinations. Every single detail of this game, every everything we're doing, the reason why we're here, you know, the reason why we get called in to, to do this at all, it's all to do with the people in charge. And that's not itself making any kind of commentary. That's just <laughs> that's just the story that the developers chose to make, which itself betrays a kind of a fundamental misunderstanding of vaporwave beyond the mere surface level, beyond the the simple aesthetics of it of, as a as a genre. And I think that's really telling. It's the same frustration I have. As a fan of, you know, fantasy, uh, fantasy books and historical fiction, you know, it's always about the people in charge. It's always the movers and shakers of society. It's always the people around whom the world turns that the story gets to be about. We don't play as a citizen. We don't get to hear from any of the citizens. The only citizens in the game we can talk to are either dead or one specific guy who is currently accused of ending the world. We don't really get to see things from their side. The world is steeped in details that show us how things are from their side, but that doesn't change the fact that everything we actually care about, everything that the game cares about, and it's important to remember that games indicate what they consider to be thematically important as a medium by the things that the mechanics are about, by the things that the story is about. This game's mechanics and story are both completely about dealing with the petty power squabbles of the... Of the irritating bastards in charge of this horrible, exploitative society. I could see another version of this game where you played as a citizen in this society. 
and had to deal with all of the disempowerment that it brings. And that would be far truer to the spirit of Vaporwave, if you ask me. Anyway, time to crack open another one of these. This computer controls that valve. This looks like some kind of venting system for the dead zone. I guess the air is filtered so that demonic corruption doesn't creep out. Opening this should send the marshals into a panic. I might be able to get into the barracks without being seen in the chaos. Interesting. She didn't say that the last time we were here. Nightmare computer. Nightmare computer unlocked. Wait, shit. Uh oh. The valve is venting gas from the corrupted zone below. It should set off the demonic detec detection systems. I'm sure the marshals will be running out of the barracks any moment now. Whoa, okay, that's not what I was intending to do. I was just going to unlock it and come back later. I didn't realise that completing the thing would completely activate it. Which means it's time to go uh, sprint off to the marshal barracks and see what we can find before it's too late. I doubt the game will actually impose any kind of... Uh, timing based penalty or system here but uh, it's probably best that we hurry regardless although it's <laughs> no matter how uh, much of a hurry we're in we always have time to pick up pick up a you know 50 pence piece off the ground they're so shiny you know well I fell in a hole I was gonna say, I also always have time to talk to my buddy Shinji, which is also true. Wanna tell me anything about your home planet? Not really. Why not? Well, I don't like people prying into my affairs. Oh, okay. See ya! There we go. Right, back to what I was doing before I was rudely interrupted by falling down a hole. Twice. Uh, anyway, I can't remember what the fuck I was talking about, so... What we'll learn, hopefully, from this excursion, which will probably actually be happening next episode, or at least stretching into next episode, is a whole bunch of curious information about what's going on in there. Since, at the moment, it seems like if this was a conspiracy of just a few people, Aikiko was uh, definitely in charge or definitely a major component. Recording zero zero one. I'm going to find out what's going on. This isn't right. This island feels wrong. I'm going to blow this wide open. The syndicate, the syndicate, the syndicate. This island feels wrong. Hmm, another one of these weird recordings. I still don't know what's up with them. <laughs> You're in it neck deep, up to your eyes in crime. On a battlefield with psychos and criminals? Well, that's my job. And you're cool with it? Well, you can't investigate if there aren't crimes. So what you're saying is that you never want to wipe out crime because then you'll have nothing to do. That's one way of looking at it. It's the only way, if you ask me. <laughs> That's interesting as well. Because that could uh, be considered to be tying back into some of the st stuff I was saying a while back. About the nature of crime in these systems and the way that the game is unwilling to consider the fact. Well, to consider several facts about the nature of crime as an idea or a concept. Instead, treating it as some kind of inescapable ill, but um, that—I mean—that kind of stems itself from the un from a misunderstanding or a misapplication of the word crime, because it's not really crime that's being talked about. It's more of a kind of a well, we don't really have a word for it beyond crime or sin or evil act. Even we have all these different concepts which refer to different reasons for doing bad stuff or different things that are declared bad regardless of whether or not they hurt people um, and I forgot why I started talking about this I have uh, in all honesty I am pretty tired and flaky in my brain today so I'm very forget uh, forgetful and easily distracted which is perhaps why it was unhelpful to have triggered this at this particular juncture. Well, it looks like that guy's still guarding, so... What happens if I just talk to him? Ah, the same things I've already asked about. I see. Can I just go in? Do you think they left the door unlocked? Nope. Alright, so exactly what was this supposed to achieve? Or 
or is there some kind of timing I'm supposed to wait for? Because I'm pretty sure that's the entry to the barracks. And the back side of the barracks is over here somewhere. This is a roof of part of it, or part of the roof of it. Man, the barracks is fucking enormous. In fact, the barracks is bigger than the citizen apartments. Like, in terms of objective coverage. Definitely looks like that's the statue that we were talking about previously. Who's, lo who's leaving loose change on the rooftops, I think, having forgotten that thing Shinji said about how Shinji had stolen all of the money on the island and was going to leave it around for me to find as a fun little collectathon. Oh hey, could I have just got in this way the whole time? Nightmare computer. Nightmare computer unlocked. Well maybe the idea is that uh, this distraction gets rid of the, all of the guys inside so that I can uh, look around with impunity. Even if they do still have a guy on the front desk. Uh, preventing me from getting in from the main door. Uh. It's suddenly, it's suddenly gone a little bit deus ex. A little bit dishonoured, a little bit thief. With distractions letting you sneak in a roof hatch. Well, I'm not going to complain. Or perhaps this isn't the barracks, this is some kind of like superstructure on the outside of the barracks. Maybe this is the actual entry to the barracks. Nightmare computer. Nightmare computer unlocked. Oh, -ho. okay. So that's going to get me access to a crime scene. I'll come back and look at that in a second. Is there anything else going on in here? Because there's definitely. Aha! Okay, so there's, there is a big way down over here, which looks like it leads into the main body of the building proper. I wonder what would have- I wonder if uh, if you try and get in here without doing the distraction, she'll be like, um, there's like 400 guys in there. Actually, now that I've thought about- now that I think about it, the marshals are citizens, and they don't get to come to the next island, but they're, they're clearly not involved in the citizen slaughter ritual. Or at least they aren't slaughtered in the citizen slaughter ritual, since they're all still here. So they're already privileged above the other members of society, which is not a surprise, all things considered. Anyway. Martial quarters, mess hall, and training hall. My blood vial's not authorised for this door. I doubt Aikiko will allow that. Well, that might... I might not be able to get through there, then. Or I might be able to later in the game. Who knows? I'm probably not going to be able to get back in here again, though. There's just heaps of munitions. Armory and combat halls. My blood vial's not authorised for this door. I suspect that this is basically just a, an easy way to imply that the building is a lot bigger than the building they've actually built. Anyway, it's not a surprise that the, the marshals are privileged over the average uh, ordinary Joes. The average miserable citizens. Comes away over from this side. Prisoner processing and cells. Anyway, yeah, uh, because they are essentially the police of this world. I mean, there's not a meaningful difference between the armed forces of this of this world and its police. Uh, although I suppose briefly there was with the Paradise Psycho Unit, which. Again, concerning set of words. This door leads to the barracks. It's a secure tunnel to the desolation cell where Henry is incarcerated. It's coded to only Aikiho's blood vial. That's interesting. They've used the same piece of text for this side of the door as well as the other side, even though um, it should say that the other way around. 
This doesn't lead to the barracks. This is the barracks. New Knight, the Holy Warrior, the Slaughterer of the Chained Star System. New Knight is an arrogant goddess that only deems soldiers worthy of her attention. The Syndicate got superstitious after any statues of her outside of Martial Grounds were destroyed by Red Lightning on the Fifth Island. Since then, there's only ever been one statue of her on each island. Henry says he remembers seeing New Knight last night. Did he come past this statue? If he did, it means he came through the barracks. This is the only one on the island. That means Henry took a different route to the council building. Which route did he actually take? Well, we already know that it's impossible for him to have traversed that distance in the time that we've been told he did. Uh, if he didn't pass through here. Passing through here is enough of a shortcut that he could probably manage it. I would guess. Um... She doesn't want worshippers who aren't uh, who aren't soldiers. Do I count enough of us uh, enough as a soldier? New knight, a humanoid with two dog heads, a warrior clad in gold armor, carries a spear, sword, and shield. Based her forces in Romania. Probably extremely warm in here. Anyway, so all of these doors are locked except for. Uh, well, no, all of these doors are locked. So we've now got our evidence about New Knight, which means that it's going to be time to go back up to the top and uh, get fucking dizzy as hell trying to climb up this goddamn spiral staircase. No, it's not a spiral staircase, it's a switchback, but um, still. So next time we can have a look and see what is inside the mysterious... Oh god, there's another one. I don't normally get motion sick when playing games, but trying to climb up these staircases is uh, kind of upsetting and for reasons I can't figure out. Anyway, um, I'm glad that's over with. We've now got the evidence we need because we've definitely shown that Aikiko was uh, spouting bullshit in a way that is broadly incontrovertible, although I'm sure that she will immediately say if we challenge her about it, well, I can't explain that. You're just going to have to trust that uh, what I'm saying is true, which we have never once done. Anyway, that's going to be it from me today. Thank you so much for watching. Join me next time and we'll find out what's in whatever this is. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream on Twitch and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.